Generational gaps. We used to think of those in terms of years, if not decades. For example, the generational gap that almost certainly exists between you and your parents. That was something that was a given. But in the current year, specifically with regards to the so-called sexual market, the notion of generational gaps doesn't only exist, it's been accelerated tenfold. And by that I mean, and this is something I've talked about several times over the past year or two, has short-circuited a lot of the things that used to just be a given in terms of the mating market. And it is certainly, without question, accelerated what you could call generational gaps in the mating market. And what I'm talking about here far exceeds what you might think. There actually is, if you think about it, a huge difference between 2020 and 2015 in terms of the mating market, in terms of the lay of the land. For one thing, just as an example, the absolute state of e-thottery, e-girls, Twitch, Chatterbait, OnlyFans, which is fairly recent, that stuff existed to a degree in 2015, but not to the extent it does now. And if you roll back further, say 2013, it barely exists at all. And if you go back even further to antiquity, 2010, it might have existed, but to the extent that it did exist, not many people were talking about it and not many people were aware of it. And this has important ramifications for everyone involved, not just the young guys, but also for the older guys, and I'll get into that in a bit. But almost in lockstep with this acceleration of technology, specifically with online e-thottery, e-girls, selling your image, as it were, for lots of money, there's also been a cooling down of a certain type of rhetoric. You see, back in the day, in the manosphere, specifically within MGTOW, it was still very much the era, say, early 2010s, when a lot of mainstream outlets would be talking about manning up and effectively getting back to the plantation, doing what's right, you know, getting married, slaving away for the sake of your wife, that sort of thing. That was very common rhetoric. There are also shows asking the time-honored question of where have all the good men gone, and sometimes they still do, but not to the same degree. And you don't generally hear the notion or the rhetoric that men have to get back to the plantation. The mainstream is more or less forgotten about the plantation. People just don't talk about that anymore. But it begs the question, why do we not hear in the mainstream, at least, the rhetoric that we grew accustomed to 10 years ago even seven years ago, and certainly further back in the 2000s, of men manning up, of men doing the right thing, it's because men have now reached a new stage of invisibility. And by that I mean, it used to be that even average Joes could catch enough attention in the sense, not as individuals, in the sense of a broad demographic, that people were alarmed if they were not doing the quote-unquote right thing towing the line. These days, men, with very few exceptions, have never been this invisible. So what's actually likely happened is not that people themselves have forgotten the idea that men should quote-unquote man up and do the right thing. It's just that all the men that were being shouted at in the past and talked down to in that regard, they've become completely invisible. In fact, if you are an average guy, a young millennial or an older Zoomer, just playing your video games, existing, they don't care about you. They don't give a rat's ass about you. You're completely invisible. And in a way, you could argue that's worse than it used to be, at least in the past, right? If you were an average guy, they wanted you to do the right thing. Now they don't care about you, whether you live or die, whatever you do. You want to waste away eating Cheetos, playing video games all day? They won't even tell you, be my guest, because they won't even notice you doing it. And a lot of this has to do with the hyper-real. The perception that everything below a certain threshold, in terms of looks, in terms of status, is no longer desirable on the part of women. 
and to the extent that the plantation talk ever was really relevant to individual men, I don't really think it was. I think at the level of maybe families and personal interactions, there were men who obviously had to deal with this sort of talk. Why aren't you getting married? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? But on the macro scale, it was just rhetoric. It was, quote-unquote, society, right? But it had very little to do with you as an individual. Now it has even less to do with you as an individual. Very few people are talking about the joys of marriage these days in the same capacity they used to. And there are all sorts of reasons for this. One thing is e-girl commerce, as I call it. And I'll be talking about that in a future video in much greater depth. But needless to say, these days... You can be a very plain Jane, a very average-looking female, and you can rake it in by doing lewd, inappropriate things online, or even just existing in some cases, whilst typing some things on a keyboard and playing around with a mouse. And if you want to go a little bit further, you can make even more money. Most of the e-girls making tons and tons of money are not exceptional. They're average, above average, by old standards. But you have these guys throwing money at them left and right. And again... That's a whole other kind of worms that I want to crack open at a later date. So there's that old feminist joke, women need men like fish need a bicycle. In a sense, they still do, because a lot of this e requires simps to throw money at them in very, very profound ways. But as long as they're getting that cash flow, so that's a really big factor in this. The market, the economy itself has shifted, because... There are plenty of these females, these plain Janes, who are making tons of money just by existing online, breathing, typing things, and moving a mouse around. I'm sure all of you are aware that in many developed countries, specifically the United States, suicide rates are way up for young men and older men, for men in general. So we're at a new stage of the invisible. They're not even talking down to you anymore. They don't acknowledge your existence. But... I'd like to think that there's actually a stark power in that, especially for the younger guys. This is another topic I want to dig more deeply into in the future. But the old guard, the men who paid their dues, the guys who simply you know, crossed the finish line of a certain age, such as myself, and I'm not saying that's an accomplishment, I just got lucky. We have a very different perspective, and that perspective increasingly is inapplicable to the young men growing up today. It is a completely different world. Remember the rapid generational shift, we're talking about in terms of the sexual market, in terms of men's existence, as much as it relates to society and the world at large, and specifically women. Maybe two or three generations have already passed in the last 20 years. Two or three generations, that is insane, and maybe even more. And what's going to happen in the future? Well, that's largely unpredictable, as it always is. But I think... A reasonably safe guess is to say we're going to get more of the same, but even more accelerated than it already is. This notion of the plantation, of doing the right thing, we're well past that. That was an important topic to cover back in the day. Nobody's really urging you to get married anymore. Hell, these days, most guys are lucky enough if they can even get a female to acknowledge them. Forget about marriage. And a lot of this has to do with things talked about in the past at length. Runaway hypergamy? Well, yeah, that's pretty much what it is these days. It's well, well beyond what it was 10 years ago. And in a way, it matters, but it doesn't. Because think about it from a MGTOW perspective. There was, you could say, societal, social resistance, if you want to call it that. And there might have been some personal resistance in your family, and maybe some friends, your private life. But now there are no obstacles left. You can just do whatever you want to do, presumably, because A, you're completely invisible, whether you're young or old, and B, nobody's going to care. There's no need to be angry anymore about these circumstances. It's always best to accept things and work within the framework of reality. I think the most important takeaway from this is that we need to stay on our feet. We need to be aware of how rapidly these things are changing, especially if we're commenting on the state of men and the world and women and what have you, we need to be highly cognizant of just how quickly these changes are coming every year even. 
and not get stuck in a paradigm that we had grown up with or become familiar with during a certain age, during a certain time, because it's simply no longer applicable. I've been meaning to talk about this particular topic for a few months because I think so many things have changed and there should be more to come in the future, assuming I'm still alive. As always, may the gods watch over you. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.